Now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, roads freezing over as temperatures hover around zero this morning. Our team is monitoring the conditions to keep you safe out there. Plus, students in Douglas County Schools will have another day off today because hundreds of teachers are protesting what they hope to accomplish with their sick out. And we're on the verge of several changes to mask mandates in the metro where those masks can come off this weekend. And we are following some breaking news this morning. President Biden says the top Islamic State leader was killed in a raid in Syria. A senior official says he blew himself up and his family when troops moved in. We'll learn more about the operation from President Biden when he addresses the nation here in 30 minutes. And we will carry a special report over on Denver 7 and stream his remarks on the Denver 7 mm. Plus app. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Brian Sanders and I'm Nicole Brady. A lot happening, but it is a Denver 7 weather action day and it is so cold outside. Meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo is keeping an eye on the forecast. We'll get to Jason and Veronica with a look at how the cold is affecting the roads. Uh, but Lisa, right now, those those wind chills are just unbelievable. Yeah, they're a little brutal. Yeah, here's what it looks like outside right now. Five degrees below zero right now. That's the current temperature feels like 18 below. We do have some wind chill advisories in place. You're going to find a feels like temp of about about 15 to near 30 degrees below zero this morning. And again, these are the temperatures right now in Firestone 10 below. Same thing there in Littleton. It's actually colder here across the plains than what we're seeing in the mountains this morning. This afternoon, though, we will see a bit of a warm up. It's going to take some time, though. We're going to go from these again, sub freezing temperatures to right around 20 degrees this afternoon for a high upper teens to low 20s across northeastern Colorado. Same thing there in the mountains. So in fact, statewide, we're tapping into some really cold air today. Skies have cleared though, so it's beautiful. Lots of sunshine out there and we will see more of a warm up this coming weekend. I'll show you what to expect in the mountains and here in town on your weekend forecast coming up in just a few. And it is still a very slick drive in a lot of spots. Deceptively icy in some spots. You think the roadways and the highways are just wet, but they're not just wet. You have a lot of ice and snow still on these roadways, unfortunately, and you can see that across downtown Denver. Heavy stop and go traffic. Sixth Avenue, you can still see some of the ice and snow between lanes and right next to lanes. Uh, you can see the drive here on ice over by Central Park and that's 270. So the uh, refinery as well as the power plant is causing a big fog and low cloud bank across 270. It's actually dropping snow across 270 in parts of I-25 and I-76 right now. Take a look from the map up this way. We've had several problems on 270, I-25, several crashes here at 38th. Air Tracker 7 is over that right now. And you can see that we do have uh, from their vantage point, uh, there's a crash on the northbound side split between the left and the right side. The southbound crash is clear, but still very slow traffic across downtown Denver right now. And you can see that on the travel times here this morning. So you're looking about a half an hour either direction on I-25. Going out to Golden right now, we've been looking at all the road conditions around town. Veronica Costa is out there. Uh, not going out to the brewery, I don't think, there, Veronica, but uh, you're not too far from, uh, from there right now. Not yet. Not this morning, Jason. Uh, 19th and Illinois Street here in Golden this morning. This roadway is a bit more covered in snow, and we'll show you. So the bad news here. This one is more so covered than all the others we've seen in places like downtown Denver, Englewood, Littleton, even Morrison. But the good news is take a look at these cars. They're not as dug into snow as some of the other vehicles that we've seen in different neighborhoods all morning long. So a plow definitely came through here at some point. Hasn't been through here maybe since because we're not seeing too much of the actual roadway here. It's the tiniest bit slick, but I wouldn't say it's too bad, mainly because we're not seeing it's too wet. Instead, we're seeing it snow covered, but off to the sides. Take a look. A good amount of snow there. Not too many vehicles here. We did take a bit of the major roadway to get to Golden from Morrison and those roadways. They're doing pretty well. They're not uh, so snow covered as some of these smaller streets are. They are a tiny bit wet. So what you're going to have to watch out for this morning is making sure that you're careful and slow just in case you hit some of that ice. We're going to keep driving through Golden and keep you updated here in about 30 minutes or so on those road conditions. We're in Golden this morning. I'm Veronica Costa, Denver 7. Sounds uh, pretty crunchy where she is. All right, thank you, Veronica. Well, states from Maine all the way down to Texas are in the path of this same winter storm. Nearly 30,000 power outages are reported across Texas and Oklahoma as temperatures there plunged into the teens. It's also making a mess on the roads, tractor trailers jackknifed on a highway in Missouri and careened off an overpass in Indiana. Officials in Oklahoma are investigating if icy conditions are to blame for this train derailment. 
We have some breaking news. There's a SWAT situation at a hotel in Aurora right now, and our crew is uh, providing us with this live picture of the scene there, or this video, I should say. There was a call overnight that there was a man with a gun at the extended Stay America Hotel off East Harvard. Uh, officials haven't been able to make contact with the person in the room connected with that report yet. Uh, they do have nearby rooms evacuated to make sure everyone is safe out there. We'll let you know if this resolves. Also breaking right now, officials say a missing woman out of Rio Blanco County has been found safe. Her accused kidnapper Joseph Beecher is in custody. He was considered armed and dangerous. Police say they were spotted in Golden yesterday afternoon. We're working to learn where exactly they were found. Today is another day off for kids in the Douglas County School District, not because of the weather, but because hundreds of teachers have called out sick and are expected to protest. Colette Bordelon joins us live from outside Douglas County High School in Castle Rock this morning. And Colette, the teacher protest is because some school board members are allegedly trying to force out the superintendent. Yeah, that superintendent is Corey Wise. He's been with the district for more than two decades, but only in that superintendent position for less than a year. What three school board members are saying is that other members of the board want to force him out. Now, we've been told by a parent that teachers love Wise here in the district. He was once one of them. Our partners at the Denver Post say the president of the Douglas County Federation estimated 900 people requested substitutes for today. While we don't have an exact number of how many teachers plan on protesting, all preschool, elementary, middle, and high school classes are canceled across the district. Things like sports will still happen unless parents have been told otherwise. The school board president says he does not plan on removing the superintendent or forcing his resignation behind closed doors. But those allegations come as the school board is planning on making changes to the district's mask and equity policy. I wondered if they were aware of just how devastating the timing of this would be for our system, um, a system that's already under duress and struggling to maintain stability just because of the hardship we've had for the past couple of years. As part of that protest, there's a rally planned today at one outside of the district's administration building in Castle Rock. Now, if you haven't already checked and your child goes to a charter school within Douglas County, you might want to check on their status campus or their campus status for today. As of Wednesday afternoon, Superintendent Wise has not resigned. Live in Castle Rock, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Thank you, Colette. Well, mask orders are ending across the metro area over the next 10 days. Take a look at the calendar here. As of tomorrow, Denver and Broomfield will no longer have their mask mandates in place. Also, mask orders in Adams and Arapahoe counties will expire Saturday. Larimer County's mask order will end next weekend on the 12th. Jefferson County will meet tonight to discuss its mask mandate. But just remember, businesses and schools may still have their own mask requirements in place outside of the county orders. Dropping the mask mandate is great news for a lot of people, but there are also some who just feel a little more comfortable wearing a mask regardless of the rules. When we get used to something, any change is an adjustment. So acknowledging that change is hard and adapting to it is hard. And there's also a lot of mistrust, right? So a lot of people wonder, well, are they telling us to take off the mask because of political pressure or is it really safe for me? And usually the people who have higher anxiety levels are the ones who feel it more intensely than others. So Dr. Gava there, who you just saw, says it's important to respect people who want to keep wearing their masks and respect people who don't. Changes for mask policies come as COVID cases continue to decline. Sky Ridge Medical Center in Lone Tree shared some good news with us. We're starting to see a drop in our, the number of COVID patients in the hospital, and we are very grateful that the number of employees who are out sick is on the decline. So this is a really bright spot, a little bit of optimism. Officials say they're hoping to get past this peak of hospitalizations and get to a new normal. Well, black history is Colorado history. That's the lesson one museum curator is hoping to teach Coloradans this February with a new statewide project. History Colorado recently received a $50,000 grant to create an African American heritage trail. The trail will use local histories from across the state to highlight sites significant to black history. Curator Dexter Nelson II says this will not be your traditional trail. We're trying to, you know, take advantage of technology and utilize um, phones to actually have the trail live as a digital application. 
but also communicates to actual physical sites you can go to. Nelson says the project will utilize volunteer regional ambassadors across the state to help document important places and stories. A proposal to bring more equity to the college admissions process and national leaders are following a rule already in place here in Colorado. Also big changes to the Broncos staff. Details on the supporting cast new head coach Nathaniel Hackett is bringing to Denver.